Amen. Two weeks ago, we began a series of messages that uh, we've been talking about, the power of faithfulness. In fact, my prayer, my hope for each one of you is on that day when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, He will say these wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's my heart for you. And we've been looking at King David's life, all right? And what we've done is we've divided King David's life into three stages, all right? The first stage we looked at two weeks ago, and he was, David was just a young boy in his father's house, and he was faithful in natural things. He was faithful to, you know, obey his father, to learn how to play the harp. He was faithful in practicing his sling and he was faithful to tend the sheep and because of that God raised him up and brought him before Goliath which launched his life uh, in, a, in an incredible way and then last Sunday we looked at David's life uh, the season of David's life when it, that was a, a season of adversity and there, those were, had to be the most difficult years of David's life right he was on the run from King Saul but he was faithful and many people struggled to remain faithful in adverse circumstances they do okay when everything's going well right but when adversity comes they give up they faint they get bitter they refuse to forgive they seek vengeance they let go of their morality they turn to pleasure seeking but David was faithful and so he had been tested and had been he had learned to depend upon God that God would see him through and so finally the third stage arrives and the dream comes to pass for David we're gonna call it stage three and it began on the day when David became king as Samuel said that he would so if you have your Bibles we're in 2nd Samuel chapter 5 or the it's gonna be on the screen up here it says this all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. And when all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, Hebron, the king made a compact with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. And David was at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed, and he reigned, excuse me, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. And so David has went through two stages very faithfully, and now he's in the most powerful and, I think, difficult stage, the season of influence. And I believe that this is the most difficult stage of life to be in and remain faithful. David is now put in a place of influence. He's the leader of Israel. He's the king. He has the power to do whatever he wants. And for the next 40 years, David must remain faithful. And if he remains faithful, he would leave a powerful legacy that would be known around the world and even in the word. And if he's unfaithful as king, every single act of unfaithfulness would ultimately become known. And some of you know that David did have two different moments in his life when he was actually unfaithful in his life. And it was during this stage of life while he was king. It's no secret that the giant killer was brought down by a woman, all right? Uh, he was on his rooftop one day, and he looked across uh, from where he was at, and from his vantage point, he could see a woman bathing. And he saw her, wanted her, lusted after her, called for her. She came. Uh, he, she became pregnant. She informed him, Sir, I, I'm pregnant. And David tried to, his best to cover it all up. And ultimately, we, if you know the word, you know that he had her husband murdered. And then he's later confronted by the prophet. But I'll tell you that that moment of unfairness faithfulness cost David an incredible amount of pain and sorrow in his life, in the kingdom, and particularly in his family. Just as there is a reward for 
faithfulness, there are consequences to unfaithfulness, right? David's second act of unfaithfulness was that uh, he began to take a census of all the fighting men in Israel. He wanted to see how many men were under his control, under his reign. And God never told him to see how big his army was. He, God never asked him to do that. But he was interested in that because he wanted to feel pride in the greatness of his army. All God wanted him to feel pride in was the greatness of his God. Come on. And there were consequences to that sin as well. And I'm telling you this because you see David for the most part was faithful. These two incidences, these two uh, relatively, uh, you know, I'm not calling them small, but these two incidences in David's life, uh, probably just a few weeks, maybe just a few months long at the most was part of the legacy that David left. Now tell your neighbor there's really good news, okay? The good news is that God forgives. Amen, aren't you glad for that? God forgives. Well, God forgave David, and he is known in the Scripture all through the Bible as the man after God's own heart. He's called the psalmist of Israel. He was a worshiper. He was a lover of Jehovah God. There's no doubt in my mind that David is with the Lord today. Come on. The Messiah actually came from his lineage, yet the lessons of his life are very real. Two lapses in his faithfulness would be long remembered and would have devastating consequences both in his family and in the nation that he led. And remember that he had already passed through two seasons of his life and been 100% faithful. And so I think that this is the most difficult season for anyone, David or you or me, to navigate. It's the, series, it's the, it's the stage of influence. And I have you know that most of us here today are in the season of influence, all right? We're in the season of influence. Uh, that season can be difficult. You know, how many of you realize that when you're going through adversity, you say to yourself, man, I need God. Hello? You need God. You, you call out to Him. You pray more. You, you're in the Word more. You're seeking after God more. But when you're blessed and highly favored, hello, it's easy for God to fall off the page, so to speak. When you've got a nice fat 401k and you have your health and you've reached a level of blessing where you're making really nice money and you've got opportunity to travel, you've worked hard, you've gained ground, you become a leader, that's when the temptation, my friend, is the greatest to leave the foundation of truth that you've established for your life. And many of you today are in positions of influence in your job, in your business, in the company that you're a part of. You're in a position of influence. Do I got any grandparents in the house today? Come on, wave at me, all y'all grandparents, your moms and dads in the house, your aunties and uncles. You influence others. Some of you may be teachers. You have friends that will listen to you. You know, John Maxwell said these words. He said that the average ordinary individual will influence up to 10,000 people across their lifetime. And so the question becomes in this stage of life, will you use your influence for God's glory or for your own pleasure? A few years ago, I was watching the you know, the news at night, the Houston news, and, and uh, something happened that just grieved my heart so much. There was a, they had a little clipping, a clip of there of a, of, of a pastor and a congregation, and this particular pastor was telling his congregation that he had to have a $150,000 Bentley, okay, and the congregation had given him this Bentley, and and uh, you know that was his 15 minutes of fame, and how that just grieved me, you know, when I watched that. Because how many of you realize most pastors aren't that way? Hello, tell your neighbors, very few pastors are that way. But but I mean, I, I didn't, and I'll tell you, I don't know this pastor, but I can assure you of some things. I'll bet you he was faithful in natural things. I'll bet you he had been faithful in adversity, but yet he found himself using his influence influence unwisely. And I'll just have you know that there's a crisis among our leaders today. Public trust in the government remains near historic lows. Only 17% of Americans today say that they can trust the government in Washington to do what is right just about always or most of the time. That used to be in the 60s about 70 
80% of the people trusted the government. Actually, it's down to 17% only trust the government. According to Yale School of Management, only 35% of the people in America believe that their leaders, that being in politics or in business or whatever, only 35% believe that they're even honest. How many of you know we have a crisis in the stage of influence? How many of you are with me? Apparently, something has gone drastically wrong. Dr. Robert J. Clinton, professor of Fuller Theological Seminary, believes that more than 70% of men and women who arrive at a position of influence and leadership actually do not finish well. What sad words we're hearing today. For one reason or another, some area of unfaithfulness brings them to the point where they don't finish well. Well, you say, what happens, what happens to people who don't finish well in life? What happens to people who are, kind, who are unfaithful? You know, hopefully they won't find their moment of fame like that pastor did. But, but, but many times what happens is they simply just kind of fade into obscurity. It's like, it's like their life is written in invisible ink and, and they just kind of fade out and I'll tell you something God does not want that for you and for me come on God wants for you and for me to finish well hello God wants for us to be positive all the way through our lives God wants us to live our lives with faith and with courage and even as an old person whoever you are amen who's a little older come on we can believe God is still God and he still has something for us to do and we can be faithful all the way through come on give the Lord a, a hand of praise God wants you to run through those pearly gates and have the Lord say well done for good and faithful servant how many of you say pastor I'm gonna be faithful all the way I'm gonna trust him and believe him all the way we got to get back to David for a moment okay there were some things that he did right we touched on a couple of things he didn't do right but there was a whole lot of things that David did right and I've got three quick lessons that we can learn from his life today things that David did right first of all and we got to do these we have to do these same things in the season of influence how many of you say I think I'm in a season of influence wave at me is that you today amen 